titles. Go. Oh, uh, Forbes ain't here, man. <laughs> Dragon <laughs> ass. Facial obliteration. <laughs> Potato crumbs. Stays up for four hours. <laughs> Balls with sticks. Peaches McNazi. <laughs> In a bit. Setting. The napalm do soup. <laughs> Stinky butter. The lettuce bitch. Just the tip. Of nightwing. Yeah. <clears throat> That'd be a wing tip. <laughs> a nightwing tip. A nightwing tip is do a good one. you want the nightwing tip? <laughs> I think you want the nightwing tip. Let's do it. Warning. What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Geek Pod. I'm your host, Paul. I'm Hugh. I'm Kev. <laughs> I'm Jack. Guys, what's got you geeked? Oh, well, I uh, could have been geeked by the announcement that uh, it seems like Sony might be making another handheld, but the Steam Deck is perfect and I don't need anything else. So I, I guess I'm going to go with something that I was interested in in something that made me laugh that uh, that happened today. So you guys know The Last of Us Part 1 released on PC uh, a week ago, and it, it's a yes. disaster. And it's still a disaster. They're working on it. Um, that, that's beside the point. Um, what came out today, and this was a uh, an article I read in the Tech Times, so it was in a regular website. Now, somebody has modded Pedro Pascal into the game over Joel's face. Oh, that's and funny. They show pictures of it, and and it looks like Pedro Pascal, and I'm like, this is really cool. But I'm going to pull up my notes here because I want to read to you what the article said. It actually said, this is from Tech Times, the screenshot shows several distinctions between Pascal to the in-game character with his slightly chinky eyes, iconic mustache, and beard. Wow. <laughs> Shanky. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm like, what? In a, I don't know if Tech Times is reputable, but I've heard of it. But I'm just like, did somebody not proofread this and go, hey, maybe we shouldn't? Uh... And, and and you know that that was, I don't know if that was the the funniest part, but uh, the the comments uh, on Facebook on this article, I'm scrolling through because I'm expecting to see somebody say something about you know you can't say that. And instead, what I see is someone saying, you're going to need a new graphics card if they expect to mod Bella Ramsey's forehead into the game. <laughs> <laughs> so all in all, that I, I'm just shocked. I chuckled a little and I'm just like, man, this is not what I expected. That's so I, I'm not geeked about it, but I, it's been one of those days. <laughs> uh... Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a I had an well, interesting night last night. Uh, I guess I'll tell you about this. So, um, someone in the company reached out to me and they said that they wanted to try to leverage our tools to journalists and things <laughs> like that. And uh, what they wanted to do was get you know Trump spoke last night, and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, but he spoke last night, and they wanted to try to capture it in real time as yeah. as close as possible get it transcribed and she was actually going to send it out to journalists i'm like well that's a good idea but our system isn't really set up for something quite that fast because it's it's an all manual process and uh, she actually pulled together a meeting yesterday with an engineer and some other people because nobody really knows what i do they, they don't know how it works so, you know i just magically make shit happen and she was like there must be a way we can automate this so we actually she i said okay I'm finally going to show you all what I do, what I do. And one of the people is someone I've worked with on it, but she's never sat through this. And I went through my entire process and the engineer's like, well, 
none of that can be automated because none of it happens within our system. I'm like, yeah. Uh, and it, like that, that's a ridiculously manual process. So what ended up happening I, now, now this person who wanted to do this, I, I mean, it, she has a great idea about trying to, to make us a tool to journalists, but I feel like something new needs to be built. She's like, well, we're going to try to record it tonight. Basically what happened is I attempted to screen record the, the entire thing last night. When that started failing, I grabbed another copy, screened that. None of that worked. Luckily, it was a short um, speech. So I start looking for for versions I can download. But as you may or may not know, when YouTube does a, a live video like that, once it's done, it can take an hour or so for it to finish transcoding before you can actually download the file. You can watch it, but you can't download it. So I basically stayed I, – I, I logged back in at 8 o'clock last night and got done around 11. Um, getting this this all out there probably later than we we needed it to, and you know I, I feel like I had to do it because it, it it was kind of a demonstration of both how much I work on this, but also the limitations of the system. And if we want to use it in a different way, we need to actually devote resources to it. So it, it was good and bad, but I you know it, it everything got shifted later. You know, yeah. because of that, and I still haven't recovered from the weekend, the late nights there, so I'm just dragging ass. <laughs> I'm so tired. Congratulations, you just had a Thursday night for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. What happens on Thursday nights for you? Maintenance updates back on the system, whatever. Uh -huh. Tuesday I update software, Wednesday I'm here, Thursday I'm back online with work, I mean, whatever. It is what it is. So yeah. when he finishes up, he probably usually has slightly chinky eyes. Typical Tuesday chinky eyes. <laughs> I drink I drink a lot and I ride a lot on the weekend. That's what takes care of all that. You anyway. ride a lot? No, I'm just <laughs> Do you want to uh, go, Kevin? Yeah, you want to you want to come over this weekend, Jack? There, Jack. Uh. <laughs> I got a okay. bridle in the garage. So, so oh. it won't just be Corbs hitting balls with sticks this weekend. <laughs> I'll be hitting some fucking balls with a stick. He's shagging those balls. <laughs> Ride him, cowboy. <laughs> I'm leaving. He gone. All right. Um, so um, when your girlfriend says to you, basically, you don't have to go, but you can if you want. You know you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you know where those conversations start. But no, it's actually kind of fun. Um, one of her favorite bands is called a band called Joy Wave. You guys ever hear of them? Yeah. And it's an it's an indie rock band, and um, Emily really enjoys them. So we're going to Buffalo, New York, in a couple weeks, and um, I haven't had a three day weekend probably since June of last year. So this will be kind of fun because I've been working both jobs, like I've been telling you guys, and just staying busy. But yeah, she was like, um, yeah, if you want to go, we can go do that. I'm like. Do you want to go see the band? She's like, yeah, I really do. I'm like, then let's plan and do something like that. So go to Buffalo, see the band, go hiking out there for a couple of days, find a couple of hiking nature places where she wants to go. So it'll be kind of fun, short and sweet, going to see a band that she really wants to see. Um, it's in the, what was it? Town Ballroom, it's called in Buffalo. Oh, so, I've heard of that, the Town Ballroom. Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty cool. So um, they got like murals on the outside. It's like uh, spray painted. And inside, um, can only hold like only a couple hundred people, so it's kind of like an intimate setting. So it's kind of cool. So what you're saying uh, is they're a really popular band. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say they're A list, but they're definitely I would say B list. For sure. I'm not sure. I would say A, B, C, or D list if they're <laughs> they're playing a venue that only holds like a hundred people. Well, like the tickets are only forty bucks a piece, which is still a pretty good price, I guess. I don't know. So, but that's what mm -hmm. she wants to do. So I think it'll be fun. But that's, I mean, if they're, yeah. if they're a good band and you're only yeah. paying 40 bucks to see them and you're not going to have a huge crowd there, I mean, that's, be that's in my mind, that's so much better than going to see some great big, huge, you know, group. You're going to be, you know, a mile away. You barely hear the music. They got to have these huge speakers for you to hear anything. You might as well listen to it on your radio. I mean, something like that is so much better because you're right there. Kev, you're 100% correct. I totally agree with that because, like, yeah, you can see probably someone bigger in name, but I like these more intimate settings, too, because maybe the, um, like, the people play two or a couple hours. This band can put on a four-hour show, 
So this will be kind of fun. Like we'll have fun doing that. They all take Viagra. (laughs) They must because if they're going to be playing that long. So, but no, it's um. She said she's seen these guys like. Well, you said they stay up for four hours. They do stay up for four hours. But it'll be fun though. It'll be great. Um, just getting out of here for a little bit, having like a three day weekend for the first time, and like I said, long long time. Last June. Wait, is this going to be? You're going to a four hour show for a band who's you don't know any of the music. Hell no. But um, oh, I'm actually. That's gonna suck, dude. I'm. I feel so bad for you. I. I'm not gonna lie. Listen... What if it's good? It's indie even rock. if it's good. It, it's it's not hard to listen to good music you don't know. It is hard to listen to four hours of good music you don't know. But he has uh, two plus hours on the drive down to brush up on the music. Well, yeah. And I then like so. we have these uh, okay. Spotify, YouTube, like all that stuff and all that stuff. So I've been listening to them. They're actually pretty good. It'll be a lot of fun. And um and I'm going to get pancakes of course on uh, Saturday morning at the Pancake House. Fuck which you is and your best. pancakes. Fuck, I, I forgot fuck. about the ramen noodles. You got to <laughs> get that shit. But all that good stuff. So short and sweet. Go ahead. What about your ramen noodles, Kev? They all gone. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> pancake and waffles and syrup ramen noodles yeah. I well, told you go be to like Walmart Harry. I'm sure they still have some you're gonna be oh, like Harry from Dumb yeah. and Dumber where you're gonna be shitting oh. out your ass <laughs> oh that they're either me. gone or they have all of them still right that reminds yes. me uh, friendly tip Jack mm-hmm. make sure you poop before the show just I know how that works with you you didn't let me go you idiot I have no bearing over what you do it's not like it's not like it's you with emily and the tater tot casserole like i did not withhold your ability to poop yeah can you imagine you're just like jump around you're like oh fuck i just started the show <laughs> I, I gotta leave <laughs> just shit my pants <laughs> Buy some stage adult diapers. <laughs> yeah stage left we're leaving <laughs> Buy some adult diapers and go enjoy the show exactly <laughs> have your turn What's got me geeked? Oh, uh, I don't know. I got a vacation coming up. I don't know. Um, I, I got a cool PlayStation in my living room. Weather's getting warm. Uh, my so wife is back from Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. I, I played it the other night, but it was a struggle. Because <laughs> um, I was out in the garage most of the day, and then, and then uh, I turned it on, and I went and I did something. I don't know what the hell it was. I turned it off, went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, done. No, you have a nice day coming up next Friday. It'll be 81 degrees out here, so that's perfect bike weather. That would have been perfect. Uh, if I didn't have to pick the wife up from the airport, I would have ridden the bike to work. I'd have been wet when I got home, but that's fine. Yeah. No, on the way home, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> that's all I got. All right. <laughs> Well, mine has all, all of you included because um, mine is uh, talking about a, a very successful WrestleMania weekend and how much fun we had and how much I appreciate having everybody over, even if the main event didn't go the way everybody on the planet expected. What, um, what ended up happening to the main event since I wasn't there? Yeah. Cody lost. Oh. Madison was very disturbed by it. I'm sure. So. And then she only went, lost two matches, <laughs> but what did Madison do? The uh, Madison was just pissed, pissed, and then she missed the main event on Raw. Thankfully, to yeah. see him get ground into hamburger. Um, what but, happened to him? Is he like uh, exiting or something? No, I, no, I'm sure we're, we'll we'll touch on that later, probably more than once. I think. Okay, but yeah, that's uh, that was it for me. Uh, just we had a really good time. If you guys are following on the Facebook page, which you ought to be. You got to see the pictures from the show. Um, we uh, we definitely threw ourselves into the spirit of it. If uh, if you haven't seen the pictures, shame on you. Go look at them. And now uh, we'll keep it moving right along. Guys, did you, what, did what you are do? we playing? <laughs> Not I haven't had out. a chance to play anything because I was at your house for two days. Well, you weren't there the whole time. Well, yeah, but I also have family responsibilities, so you know, taking that much time for myself kind of eliminated eliminated any other personal time. 
and I worked 10 plus day hours both days when I wasn't at WrestleMania. Um, well, I guess it's just you and me, Kev. So it's uh, killing it two birds with one stone. Fucking excuses out the ass. <laughs> That's I'm sorry truth. I don't play enough video games for you, Kevin. I'll try harder. Jesus <laughs> Christ, you people. You know, considering I was the only person with anything for the video gaming thing for like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, hit it, Kev. I don't know. I, I um, y'all know I finished Last of Us, and then on the PC on the PS4. So the I got PC. to experience. <laughs> no, not on the PC. Uh, so I got to experience it in its, in its true glory. Um, then uh, I've been playing Far Cry Four when I when I can get around to it. Um, most recently, we got into the Dungeons and Dragons game, um, online, the online game, and that's going all right. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's grind, grinderific or grindtastic, however you want to, however you want to put it. It's a lot of the same stuff to get, uh, you know, to get some level and some points and stuff. Um, but, um, that's going pretty good. Uh, when I can get a chance to get in there, um, but that's pretty much it. That's, I guess. How long did you say that the Dungeons and Dragon game's been around? I think that's been around for almost a decade. Yeah, you think this software would work better than it does? <laughs> uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell the guys about your character? I am a right now. I'm a level two. Uh, I'm a rogue tiefling, and a tiefling has a tail. And horns. I am. Yep. I well, actually, mine curl around. They curl yes. around and come up. And um, and I have a mustache. So I'm majestic. A majestic mustache. And a, and a mohawk. A mohawk. Does your character have a name? Uh, his name is Napalm Du Soup. <laughs> my okay. my player Napalm. names are typically Napalm Soup. So I couldn't get that, so I went with whatever I could find that was pretty pretty close. Da soup. <laughs> Dine pom du soup. Um Rogue did I say rogue? Yeah, rogue. Yes. And uh so so it's good because Paul's a cleric, so we get to have two different characters with different different abilities and we be able to help each other out. Um, I'll be able to find things like traps and, and secret doors. And Paul can heal me when I end up surrounded by four freaking snow spiders and a bunch of uh, mummies. And oh, was, always fun. Which is the only way I've died so far. Um, nice. Yeah. I, uh, I, as he said, I am playing. I'm playing a, a human male cleric. A me and male? Human male. Oh, I thought you said human. Human, human. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm uh, even though I started first, I'm behind Kev. I'm I haven't made it to level two yet. Um, the levels, you know, it, as your your experience meter goes, then you fill up five dots before you actually get to the next level. And I'm on my fourth dot on level one. Um, for for people that don't know what a tiefling is, other than Kevin's explanation. Um, that's the redheaded chick in the Dungeons and Dragons movie right now. She that's her character as a tiefling. Um, they are oh. basically half breeds that are are human and demons. They are they, they call them uh, infernal in the game. So, and do you have a character name too? Um, yeah, I do, and I can't remember. Oh, oh, Dar- Daryl Blightstorm. Not no. Daryl, Darrow, D E R R O, W, because it's it, it scolds you when when the name you want is already taken. So I went through right? about seventeen iterations before I found one that would let me do it. So. Are you guys playing with microphones where you can hear other people, or you're just like going free will, or what's going on there? I wouldn't know how to hear other people. I mean, you can. There's a chat. Where they mm-hmm. can talk to you. A text based. Social. Yeah. There's a social part where you can like find people and you can friend people. I've been adding people to my friends list. I don't even know who they are. I don't even care. I'm just like <laughs> I click on them and I add them as a friend. Um, I've had people invite me to guilds, but I haven't done that yet because I'm hoping that 
to hook up with Paul at some point, um, make our own guild, I guess, or maybe join a yes. guild. I'm not sure what the best way to do it is. Yeah. I have a feeling if we join a guild, we're going to get so kicked you out. don't have to be there to, to, um, to raid with a guild. You don't have to do that to gain the benefits of being in a guild, but we could be part of a guild, but then you and I could raid together. We could be, you know, we could be, um, Viking Raiders. No? Okay. He doesn't know what that is. Yes, he does. He saw him the other night. Maybe. Oh. Excuse me. But yeah. Uh, so far it's going pretty good. Um I, I also ran into somebody who was trying to be very helpful and give me armor and stuff that I can't use. But was, really? Yeah. Yeah. They kept just trading with me with stuff that I it's it's either out leveled for me or it's just my I literally can't wear it on my character class. Hmm. I have a few things that I could share with you probably that are, I mean, they're all level one stuff. Right. Um, so I can use it for probably another week or two. <laughs> um. So let's, let's uh, keep it moving right along. And I guess we're going to shuffle it right to uh, Kev's tabletop review. All right, so it's kind of a theme this evening with our tabletop game. Uh, tonight's table, tonight's tabletop extravaganza is Dungeons and Dragons: The Fantasy Adventure Board Game, which came out in two thousand three. So, let me just tell you why I picked this game. There are a lot of different ways to play Dungeons and Dragons. You heard us talk a few minutes ago about how we're playing it online. Well. This board game gives you yet another way to play the dungeon crawl type game. If you've been around a while, you may have heard of Dungeons and & Dragons, and you understand that it can be kind of involved to get everything moving along in the right path. you got to have a character sheet. you got to have a bunch of friends you can hang out with multiple times a month, you know, or maybe even a couple times a week. Uh, somebody who's willing to be the dungeon master and create all the really cool things that you end up doing. And figure out how to make it all, you know, fun and interesting and and help you gain experience while you gain level. Very nice. involved. Very, very, very involved. Dungeons & Dragons can be. Or it can be kind of simple. Where you do something like this board game. I'm going to say the video game that we got involved with online is kind of in the middle. Because you still have to understand all the really in intricacies of... The character types and what they what you know what they do best and what they do worst, how you can pair characters together to do uh, to do great things. This board game takes a lot of that difficulty out of it, and what I mean by that is it sets everything up pretty well for you. You have a uh, board that is your dungeon. You have a person that uh, volunteers to be the dungeon master, and you have four characters. The four characters are already built. They're already designed you have everything out in front of you all the directions are there all the all the uh, different features for the different characters are there you play all four characters every single game whether it's a two-player game a three-player game or a five-player game you're going to play all four characters every single time because they have to work together they have features that help them work together the rogue the you know the 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 big paladin type guy the cleric and um, whatever the fourth Wizard. one is. Yeah. So <laughs> the the idea is you can pick this game up. Now, I'm not going to say it's one of the easier games that I've, that I've um, uh, reviewed in the past, and I'm not going to get into the rules and all of the intricacies of the game. You can, you can check that out for yourself, and you can check out other games a lot like this that make it very easy for you to get into the dungeon crawl type game. This is a 2.19 out of 5, so it's not exactly a high, you know, high energy type game where you got to put a lot into it to figure it out. The rules are very clear. The instruction to get you up and start, up and running is very clear. There's some great, great, great tutorial videos out there. Go find the game on BoardGameGeek.com. The videos you'll watch are playthroughs, and they will actually help you learn how to play the game. Just a fantastic 
fantastic way to get involved in Dungeons and Dragons, especially for those folks that can't really get a lot of people together more often or that don't have the ability to spend a lot of time getting involved in the regular Dungeons and Dragons game. Very, very fun game. Very well built. The um, the little the little uh, plastic characters you get are very, uh, very um, featured, very well featured. Um, the dice that come with it are, are multicolored, mostly all six-sided, but they have different features. They offer different purposes. The character cards are very well made. It'll be a fun game to look at and to experience. Uh, so my 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 suggestion is to you is to go out and take a look at this. Two to five players, 60-minute playtime. Again, 60 minutes is probably for people that are used to the game. Uh, so probably a little bit higher than that when you first get started. Ages 10 and up. One of the videos I found was a couple, a married couple, and they had their daughter playing with them. The, 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 the father and the daughter were playing against the mother who was the uh, dungeon master. Nice. And she was very mean. She was she was ruthless. She's, <laughs> yeah, I like her. Um, and wait, I already said two point one nine out of five. This is a board game. It's got dice. It's got characters. It's got fun, and it's Dungeons and Dragons. Not Go check it out on boardgamegeek.com. See if it's something you're interested in. Maybe, maybe this is your gateway Dungeons and Dragon game. Just saying. Kev, I always have that one question for you. Retail price. Retail price. What do we got? Oh, let's take a game. look here. I always like to know. <laughs> Holy shit. I remember I used to play Dungeons and Dragons in high school and in college all the time. It was pretty fun. So Geek Market has it listed in euros and pounds. So 45 <laughs> and or 80 euros, 75 pounds. Uh, you'd have to do the calculations on that. Noble Knight Games is selling it for a hundred ninety-five dollars from a and game eBay's, from two thousand three. Wow! eBay's got it for like ninety-two dollars and fifty-four cents. I probably should have looked at the price on this before <laughs> I made a suggestion, but I'm going to tell you. You know what? You only live once. If you're not worth it, who is? <laughs> and honestly, that's cheaper than in investing in what you need for. Yeah. tabletop dungeons and dragons to get started so to, to play the real game you're looking you're looking at a significant investment of time especially resources. for the person that's going to be the dungeon master that's yeah. gets very costly for them yeah 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 i've and i have a few books from the game when i when i played it when i was younger and uh, i still got them around here somewhere i gotta i'd have to find them i have to dig them out um but they were expensive I mean, I was working at a grocery store and I bought a couple of books and I remember cringing at the price, but I remember having I, a lot of fun playing the game. I seem to recall seeing a starter set for about 20 bucks somewhere. Yep. Might even have been like Walmart or something, somewhere I didn't expect to see Dungeons and Dragons. I um, just picked them up. Those are everywhere right now. Yeah. Walmart, Target. Yeah. And they have starter sets. And I'm glad you brought that up because uh, there's something funny that I found out about that starter set today. Um, and they are the starter set goes for like 15 to $20, depending on if they're running a sale or not. Um, the, the starter set doesn't allow you to make your own characters. You have to use the pre-gen characters. And apparently which, the six pre-gen okay. characters. Yeah, right. It gets you learning. Those pre-gen characters are the six main characters from the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Oh, awesome! So from the eighties. Yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. So, yeah. But so like Kev says, you only yeah. live once. You got to enjoy it. There's multiple ways to get involved. If you've ever thought you were interested in in this sort of a game, and it's really interesting because there's no set path. No. It's different every single time you play, and that's what makes it very interesting and very appealing. Whenever I think I want to play Dungeons and Dragons, I just go play Gauntlet instead. Gauntlet is fun. <laughs> there you go. Barbarian needs food badly. <laughs> All right. And on that note, I think we're going to throw it to commercial and we'll come back with the news. Stick with us, folks.
Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in Nigel, New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. Now, before I draft an email to let the former President Donald Trump know that the term facial obliteration might not mean what he thinks it means, here's the news. First up, speaking of creepy sex references we don't need a mental picture for, former President Donald Trump was indicted and arraigned this week on charges stemming from the hush money scandal a few years back. While three payments were involved, the most prominent one was made to the porn star Stormy Daniels over an alleged affair she had with Trump. Trump ally Marjorie Taylor Peachtree Dish Green said Trump was like many other heroes who were arrested by those in power. She compared Trump to both Nelson Mandela and, believe it or not, Jesus. Although that last one might not even be fair. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was years later that the church covered up his affair with Mary Magdalene. Even if he had paid her for her silence, it would have been in fish and loaves of bread. Are those even covered by New York City tax law? Or maybe he promised to swing by and turn her water into wine after he was resurrected. All we really know is he said be nice to immigrants and love everyone no matter what. Just like Donald Trump, according to Peaches McNazi, apparently. Ms. Daniels has also been under fire on social media during the run-up to the arraignment. Many Trump supporters saying a ton of nasty things related to her career that really didn't seem to bother her. After being called a cum dumpster, just like what Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, she stated she would rather be under her sexy man than under arrest, which Jesus also said to Judas right after he found out he'd been betrayed. Maybe if he'd said that to Judas before he was betrayed, there might have been something completely different trying to rise from the grave, which is exactly how I expect Stormy Daniels would describe the encounter in question. I've got Jesus in Easter jokes this week. I gave up going to heaven for Lent. Next up, <laughs> WWE's future has been endeavored. In an incredibly ironic turn of events, the company that has wished so many aspiring wrestlers good luck in their future endeavors, the WWE, has been purchased by a company called Endeavor, the same one that bought the UFC. The two companies are now going to be run by a yet-to-be-named third entity, which will leverage the popularity and reach of all parties involved. Now, former WWE owner Vincenzo McMahones will remain executive chairman and promised he would not have a direct hand in running the shows a few hours before he completely took over running the shows and leading to the hashtag worst raw ever to begin trending. I guess it's time to start paying attention to AEW again. Given the choice between a sexual predator and a cokehead, at least the cocaine might help with the creative. I mean, what would be more entertaining on paper? Harvey Weinstein running a wrestling show or Hunter S. Thompson, right? Probably the same amount of nudity, but far fewer lawsuits, which is exactly how Jesus pitched The Last Supper. And finally, crying over spilled beer, hillbilly icon and walking billboard for why drugs are bad, Kid Rock, took to social media this week to murder cases of Bud Light with an assault rifle. He is apparently upset that Bud Light founder Anheuser-Busch sent a single can of beer to trans activist Dylan Mulvaney with her likeness printed on the can. So they aren't putting this on all cans or even any for sale to the general public. It was one can sent to that one person that was shown for a second and a half on Instagram. 
I don't think he realizes what he's done. If he has to transition to the next, next best thing, like Coors Light or something, his body might not be able to handle that much of a jump in alcohol, especially since he seems prone to emotional outbursts and mood swings over things no one knows about that don't affect him. In fact, if he isn't going to transition to adult rock, he might want to consider transitioning to the little bitch he so clearly is, which is exactly what Jesus said to his mother when he noticed her crying during his crucifixion. And that's the news, kids. Now with Easter upon us, I have a pro tip. If you forget to buy little chocolate eggs to hide for your kids on Easter morning, do what I do. We always hide eggs in places our daughter never looks. They sit there in those spots all year because she never finds them. If we ever forget to buy new ones, we can just move the old ones into the more obvious spots. Just make sure if you do buy new ones to rotate the new ones to the hard spot so they don't ever get candy that's more than a year old. And let's say the chocolate does go bad and they tell you it tastes like stinky butter. Well, just say you sprung for the expensive cacao butter ones this year and blame the resulting food poisoning on eating too much Easter candy. You can save money and teach a solid life lesson right there. Paul? In other news, Barb's ain't here, man. Jack? For... No, he's not here. All right. So, Paul, one through three, pick a topic. Um, I I choose role playing games. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I'll take number three. two. Who does number two work for? All right. <laughs> um, soft drinks, aka soda. Huh. What soft drink was developed as an alternative to alcohol during Prohibition? Um, I'm going to say Coca-Cola. Nope. You just hooked it to the right in the bunker. Okay. All right. <sighs> that would be... IBC root beer. Ah, okay. Okay. Coca Cola was around as a med uh, medicinal mm -hmm. syrup long before it was. it was a soda. That's correct. It actually was. That's correct. And it actually right. had cocaine in it. It was a pain it reliever. Did. It was a lot better tasting, probably, too. <laughs> yeah. Cocaine tastes horrible, man. <laughs> All right, Hugh, two or three. Oh, one no, or three, I, I chose mean. two. Yeah. I know. Uh, I guess three. I'll take three. Snacks. <laughs> what was the original name for potato chips? Oh, crisps? No. Water hazard. <laughs> um, that would be potato crumbs. Crumbs? Really? Yeah, so, so weird. Mm. All right, this one's a good one, Kev. You have a good one. All right. United states trivia so oh the boy. state names America. think about oh think about the America. states which letter in the alphabet alphabet is the only letter that is not in a state name so there's only one letter in the alphabet that is not in a state name <laughs> he's like oh my god <laughs> the first one that comes to mind is z no but no it's arizona shit <laughs> um don't worry, I'll give you. I'm um, sorry for Hugh and Paul giving Kev a second guess. If you want to work together, you can. You can. Um, you can work together. So why is used? Okay, A B is used. Is used. Is used. I like. I'm seeing the Geek Pod hat though right now. That's awesome. That's good like, what the F? Florida. Yeah, Florida. G? Georgia. 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 <laughs> H, Hawaii. Uh, a lot of Indiana. I's. Yeah. J is... um. What is J? Um, Maine. New Hampshire. Pennsylvania. Oh, Jay is New Jersey. Um, You're right. Okay, okay, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine. Um, <laughs> well, and Maine is in 
Oh, oh, Oklahoma. Ohio. <laughs> Thank you. God. Oh. Is it Q? Got to be Q, right? I don't know. Are you guessing that? Hold on. Okay. No. There's Delaware. Quintucky. It's... No, you're thinking you're thinking of pencil tucky. Oh, that's right. I'll just say Q. I can't think of one. I mean, that, that only took um what? Well, yeah. I mean, you had to, I had to go through the alphabet because I'm like, I'm just like, uh, I don't. I think I I'm gonna know. buy. Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm gonna buy a timer for these trivia questions. Yeah, you should do that. Do that. <laughs> All right, wrapping up the segment. Today in history, so as we know, it's April 5th, 2023. What happened on April 5th in history? In 1621, the Mayflower set sail from Plymouth, Massachusetts, back to England. And then also in 1790. Yeah. I didn't know they went back. They went back. (laughs) So um, in 1795, George Washington, as President of the United States, vetoed his first bill as the president of the united states it was called i'm probably butchering it the peace of basile basile Bastille? no b-e-s-e-l basile uh, it was between france and prussia because george washington wanted to stay neutral and did not want the united states to get involved in european affairs back to paul actually today is a a, a big day mm-hmm. in history for one other thing going in the other direction today is first contact day see ah. I like it. Fourth century? No, I I mean, I think, uh, I don't think it was like more than 100 years from now. Let me look it up uh, real quick. Uh, Because I know that today's first, I saw it on Facebook. I just, come on, Google, fucking work. This was the other trivia question. This was for Corbs, but he wasn't here. We can do it together while we wait. Um, It was literature. Ah. What do you got? April 5th, 2063. Oh, oh okay. is when Zephram Cochran tested the first warp engine and the uh, Vulcans noticed and made contact with Earth in the Star okay. Trek mythos. What yes. year? 2063. <clears throat> I won't be here for yeah. that. All right. Last one, but um, I'm not sure if you guys read this. This was children's literature. This was a book we read when I was in elementary school. Charlotte's Web. Oh, uh, yeah, I know the book. I know the book. Okay, good. Charlotte's Web. So literature is the category. Why is Fern... The character Fern so important to the story of Charlotte's Web. Was Fern the pig? Wilbur. Oh, it was Wilbur. Who was Fern? Who was Fern? Plant. No, Fern. Fern, Fern was you a little girl. I've never read this no. book. So. Well, Fern was the girl? Movie. Fern was the girl. Whoa. So Why was, was she a... so important? She's the one that saved the pig's life. Correct, because Wilbur was the runt of the litter. Mm-hmm. He was going to be slaughtered. As he should have been. He would have been delicious. Oh, I love uh, bacon. Oh. Uh, you guys are asses. <laughs> I'll probably go vegetarian after this podcast. I don't believe <laughs> you. <laughs> not <laughs> if you had really good bacon. You oh, could I'm not... <laughs> be vegetarian after really good bacon. I'm not going to lie. I remember I was on a date once with a girl. She was like, I'm vegetarian. I'm like, oh, that's such a bad thing. And I mean, like a steak right in front of her. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't yeah, do this. <laughs> Honey, right. this ain't gonna work out. You can go now or after dinner. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm eating this steak, the bacon, and I'm gonna have fucking bacon ice cream for dessert. So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the door hit you on the way out. <clears throat> All right. So I guess it's time for me to throw the weekly topic out there. Let's do so, it. So let's hit the music for the Bureau of Truth. No, I'm just kidding. Um what is the story behind your dumbest injury? And the boys will tell their tales when we return. Stick with us. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. 
New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue, 90 New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. That music means it's time for the weekly topic. Let me read it right. Guys, what is the story behind your dumbest injury? Go. Uh, all right, I'll go first. It's um so growing up, like um, I told you guys about this, like I've always had knee problems, basically. It's like um it's not a it's like I call it an injury, I guess, because like my knee would always like pop out. Like I would be running a track meet, playing a basketball game. I even actually tried to sit one time in Spanish class, and I fell in the garbage can, which was fun. The knee popped out right there. Uh, one time I was sleeping. One time I woke up, but the kneecap was all behind the knee, which was really weird. So it's like, what the fuck is going on? After seeing like four or five different doctors, it was claimed that my growth plates were growing faster than my actual knees. So I had to finally sit through an MRI, and literally I always freaked out because my mom was like, just shut up and sit through the MRI. I'm like, mom, my knee is literally popping out on the table as we're doing this. So like, I had to literally try to take something to make me calm, but like, I found like a, sit, um, a sitting down MRI, but like long story short, like my knee was now corrected. I have screws in my left knee now, but it's not a freak. It's just like a stupid injury, but I consider it like an injury like that. But I had that happen when you least expect it, like for 23 years of my life, I would have my knee go out maybe a couple times a week, once a week, or once every couple months. But, like, it was just sucked. Like, like I couldn't, like, I played sports. I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm still going to live my life the best I can. But that, I had it finally corrected. And it's probably gone out since surgery, maybe twice. And I had it done when I was 23, and now I'm going to be 35 this week. So, I don't know. So, I would say it's a, an injury. But that's the story behind my knee going out, I guess. Okay. Hugh? Man, this is really hard to pick just one <laughs> because I have had so many dumb injuries from the day I cut off the top of my thumb prepping lettuce at Sam's Lakeside to when I dislocated my shoulder at um, our both our, our friend Star's birthday party. Uh, my shoulder's never completely recovered. Um, Broke my toe, rushing to get to the TV to watch Doctor Who once. That was a stupid one. Uh, when I was a kid, I had my cheese whiz, my grape Kool-Aid and everything. And I'm just running out of the bathroom, slam my foot into the door jam, break my toe. Uh, but probably one of the, maybe the funniest. And I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a lot. There, there's a ton more in there. Um, years ago, when, when I was with my first wife, we had a house over in um, the north side. And it's winter. And I never shoveled the steps because I was lazy. So the steps were icy and everything. And we had concrete steps, concrete driveway. I had to take the dog out. For whatever reason, the dog didn't want to go out the back. Or maybe I didn't want to go out the back. I don't know. I take her out the front. I was probably drunk because I was drunk a lot back then. Or at least I had been drinking. Dog had a short leash. So I go out. I'm standing out there letting her do her business on the front lawn. She was very jerky. She was a, a uh, like a Belgian sheep dog. So, you know fairly big dog and we're going back up the steps and she decides to run and the short leash jerks me icy steps i fly backwards and i think i remember when my head hit the concrete 
Um, but I was done. Yep. About 40 minutes later, my ex-wife opens the front door and is like, are you ever coming inside? I laid unconscious for almost an hour in the snow. Dog still holding onto the leash. The dog's just hanging out there, you know, completely unconscious. It took her that long to come out and check on me. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. So, I mean, you understand, you know, why why we're no longer together. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I just, I mean, that was one of the, the stupidest injuries I ever had. I, I had, I, I think I tried to go to work the next day and I had to leave. I mean, I was fucked up. Like, that's that's my... I've hit my head a lot, but I feel like maybe that's my only concussion or my only major one because I was, you, you, you know, Paul, cause you've had lots of concussions. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was like not right the next day at all. <clears throat> and, and if that I, only I lasted that day, you're lucky. Yeah. Well, I, I don't really remember. I mean, it might've <laughs> been, I think the pain lasted a n- number of days. Uh, the, the being out of it, maybe a day or two, but it was just so weird. It was almost like, like you're on drugs or something, or like you're you're seeing you're, you're like living through gauze, if that makes yes. sense. Like, or you're you're kind of disconnected from everything. It's it's fucking weird. Um, not a good time. Was it not? That's funny though. That's yeah. You'll you'll understand in a minute. Well, yeah. You well, know, it's. It, I think the funniest part of it is the fact that I laid in the snow for forty minutes. I mean, I I, yeah. I could have frozen to right. death. Yeah, she's like, you coming in? Oh, oh you're unconscious. <laughs> Not for nothing, Hugh, but you got some insulation to help you out there. I, I was I wasn't this size back then. Oh, right. <laughs> In fact, I was probably. I mean, I do too. Don't get me wrong. I, Paul, I was probably close to normal size before Demara and I got together, wasn't I? Um, I didn't know you before you got with Demara. Okay, so you, but I, you I met think me shortly we after. met shortly after you got married. I and gained you were a lot smaller. Of weight. Yes, yeah, I've gained a lot of weight since you met me. Well, a lot of that weight is also in your beard that wasn't there before yeah. either. That's... Yeah, we can actually see it. If you comb it out, it would probably reduce a couple pounds. <laughs> yes, making the hair straight will make it lighter. You're right. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just, you know, food in there or whatever. <laughs> I think it's a cat. I think I saw a cat just stick his head out, but yeah, no big deal. Is that where she is? <laughs> You can smell her, but you can't see her. I ah, haven't ah, seen ah. Poe all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got one. I got one. I got one. So on um, the tip of my middle finger on my right hand, I don't have any feeling. I don't have any sensation, but just the very tip. Because I had a Jeep years and years ago, uh, back in the I don't know, early 90s, whatever it was. That was a piece of shit. But I was cleaning, I was cleaning the mirrors, and I had this rubber, they had this rubber uh seal or whatever protective they're metal metal back mirrors glass and they had this metal edge around it had this this rubber seal i took the rubber seal off because i wanted to get the nooks and crannies and i was cleaning it you know vinyl cleaning with the with the with the paper towel and i ran my finger along that metal edge and it sliced the tip of my finger off just the very tip of my finger off i was just being held on by a little piece of skin and you could see the like the little fatty layers in there and stuff. And it was just like mm-hmm. looking at it. And I'm like, wow, that's fucked up. And I'm looking at it, and all of a sudden the pain started. Wow, did that freaking hurt? <laughs> Ran inside, cleaned it off. And if the, the first thing didn't freaking hurt, the cleaning no. it off really got to it. And all I did was I put some those stereo strips on there, you know, just to hold it in place. And then I put some gauze on it, you know, and some electrical tape to hold it in place. Of course, that's one. That's all I ever did. That's all, and you can kind of just see the mark. I don't know, the marks have really gone away, but the feeling and the tip of that finger never came back. I feel you there. Uh, Okay, it was dumb. Mm -hmm. I, I, Paul, do you care if I take a go ahead another story here? Okay, because my thumb is exactly the same way. Mm. Um, Now, mind you, I've had a few accidents since then where I've caught myself pretty bad bad with a knife. But my first instance was uh, I was working at Sam's Lakeside, and we had this machine we called the Lettuce Bitch. Now, imagine it's on four legs, and it has a a, like a grid, a sharp grid. You put the lettuce on this grid, pull down this handle, and it pushes it through the blades and cuts the lettuce up for you for the salads. And it was always breaking, and it broke down. So I'm like, okay, this isn't a big deal. I you know I can cut it with a knife. So I'm sitting here, I'm like. just barely touched my thumb. I'm like, 
oh shit, I better not do that again. Next slice took the entire top of my thumb off. I'm like, fuck, I see blood immediately stick it in my apron. I walk out to the front. Everyone's like, what's wrong? Sam, big Sam Tassone comes out. What's wrong? I'm like, uh, there's just blood going down my arm. He goes, oh my God, my insurance. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so he gets his daughter to take me to the local medical center in Brewerton, and they get me in there, and they take this thing. It looks like the tool that a dentist scrapes your teeth with, but it actually mm -hmm. shoots sparks out to cauterize the wound. Now it kind of looked like like brain in there almost, and the fatty yep. tissue, like he was talking. He's zapping this thing that hurt like hell. I mean, they they stuck a needle in there to put you know novocaine, but it still hurt, and it was making my thumbnail burn because I think it was heating up my thumbnail from the electricity get it all, all the stop leading they give me uh, some bandages and this like little plastic thing that goes over the tip with yep. like four legs and to hold my my thumb and they gave me a prescription for some good painkillers and sent me on my way as soon as i was done of course i wasn't going back to work but i had band practice after work <laughs> so i drove out to williamstown and i i get with the band in the garage we practiced in at the time and i'm like yeah I, I fucking did this to my thumb. My guitarist comes up. He's like, does it hurt? Oh, I kicked him. Good thing I missed his balls because you know, he probably oh. would have had to pull them out of his mouth. But he had a huge bruise on his leg. And for the rest of practice, because I ended up having to take it off to play guitar, I'm bleeding all over my guitar as we're playing. And it, it hurts so bad. Ugh. That's no, dedication. It's, it's it's healed now, but yeah, I can't feel a thing in the tip of my thumb. I I, I feel you. It. It's a little shorter. Like there's no padding there. Weird. It's just weird. Yeah. It's weird. All right. Um, <clears throat> I've also had multiple stupid injuries. Um, catching a a ramp wrong when I was snowboarding and coming down on the back of my head to the tune of a concussion so bad that I didn't know who I was for three days and it blackened both my eyes. Um. Falling down icy steps naked um, into the dog pen. And afraid. Um, <clears throat> also, no feeling in this finger because I pinned it between um, industrial racks and a and a powered pallet jack, uh, and it just popped open like a uh, sausage. It was good times. Oh. Uh, the best part about that story is they get me to the hospital because once they got me free, because it took six guys to lift the rack up to get me out from under it. Um, and I'm storming through the front office of the plumbing supply warehouse that I worked at bitching and complaining because I'm in shock and I'm not feeling it. And I'm throwing my hand around as I'm bitching and I'm just <laughs> spraying blood all over the office. Uh, but they get me to the hospital and Kristen meets me there. And this is when she was going to nursing school. And so they're, they're cleaning me up and I'm laying, I'm practically thrashing on the table because now I can feel everything and I'm growling. And Kristen proudly tells them that she's going to nursing school. So the real nurse, because Kristen wasn't at the time, waves Kristen over and says, oh, come here. That's cool. Let me let me show you stuff. And they're going through and they're like, oh, look, here are the tendons and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Next thing I know, Kristen spins on her heels and runs out of the room. Yeah, she she couldn't couldn't hack it at that point. Uh, and she uses the uh, the excuses that because she couldn't see me in, in that kind of pain. So she'd probably enjoy that now. Right now, it's be like, can we just <laughs> cut it off? Like, let's, what happens if you do this? And so, uh, but probably the dumbest one I have. Um, it was senior year in high school. We're walking through the Finger Lakes Mall in Auburn, and this is an old style mall. This was a definitely a 1980s mall, and it has full on light posts and everything in there, like full on big metal posts with the lights on the top and everything. And I'm talking Whoa. to my friends as we're walking and I'm looking like this and we're walking at quite a pace because we were heading to the CD shop. And I take one final step and look forward just in time to see that the post is right there. Hit it square in the face, hit so hard that my arms flew out behind me and I wrapped around the pole and just slid down it. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, was, that was probably the best one. But yeah. Matter of fact, there were a lot of injuries at that mall. There was a guardrail incident too, but I'll save that for another time. This is a good question, Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, but I think we should wrap it up. And we actually, you know what? We should save this one in our back pocket and make Corbs answer this at some point too. Yeah. So, but uh, let's wrap that up and uh, head into the midstream report. Guys, what are you watching, Kev? 
Oh my God. So much. So much. I'm caught up on the Mandalorian. Oh, wow. Yes. This week's episode was freaking fantastic. What did I say earlier in the in the chat? I mean, I know I know we have people that haven't haven't caught up. So um I said I said something about Easter eggs. I said something yes. about um, unexpected awesome Easter eggs. Yeah. I'm just I didn't even know they celebrated Easter in Star Wars. Yeah, because you know, it's really just there's so much I want to say. It was so good, but I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do what people on Twitter do, and I'm not going to say within hours of seeing the episode, knowing that there's so many people that haven't seen it. I don't want to just spill out all the shit that I saw that was just fucking amazing. Yes, um, but it was very, very good. And yes, and very. I really like the direction game changer. Yes, yes. I really like the direction they're going. I like what I saw. Um, I, I like, I just like everything about it. I don't know. It was just, it was fun. Uh, it was a thrill ride. Um, it was an adventure. It was, uh, cohesive. Yes. And it was revealing and it was unexpected. Yeah. In several ways. It made me think. Oh, sorry, Jeff. No, Bryce Dallas Howard, I guess, directed it. So yes, yeah. she does the best ones, and she is one hundred percent that bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it made me think that this show could go on without Pedro Pascal easily. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, you you could throw an S at the end, but you don't have to. Or instead of the, it's a a Mandalorian, because then it could follow any of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, you know what? A well, a show that just follows Mandalorians. You you're really I think you're I think you're concentrating too much on the fact that the Mandalorian may just mean one person. It may just mean the Mandalorian way. Or what or it means the, to the be race, yes. the Mandalorian or a Mandalorian or what it means to be oh, I almost said something. Yeah. I know you did. <laughs> I I'd see that. But all of what we're saying, Jack, is giving nothing away. Don't. No, worry. I know. Yeah. I know you guys are doing a good job. Like, it's, that's I want to see it so bad. They're doing really a fantastic do. job. They're really doing a fantastic job. And I know people have said, you know, we got a guy we work with, Paul and I work with, is, is not too thrilled with this this season because he doesn't like how little action there is, how little development there is. And I completely disagree with him. I think that the way they're developing the Mandalorians, the way they're developing that part of the universe – the way that they're showing a different side of a group of people that are trying to figure out how to make it in a post empire, um, you know, uh, what is it? What's it called? This galaxy. Called the, no, yeah, post empire galaxy, but um, in um, not the rebellion anymore. It's the um, new republic. New republic. New republic. In a new republic era, where the new republic is really just a weaker, kind of more confused empire. Really? With good intentions. They have great intentions, but they have absolutely no ability ability to see things through. It's almost like they're the fucking U.S. government. (laughs) Um, But very just, just, I I just like everything about it. I love the different, you know, the different viewpoint. Um, I I love that, you know, they've expanded this race based on a, based on a fucking bounty hunter that was wearing some armor and Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. What? He's not even Mandalorian. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, okay. What else am I watching? Um, uh, finish up Bad Batch. Very, very uh good cliffhanger ending. Fantastic because I, I was glad to see that because that definitely means it's gonna be another season. Very happy about that. Um, watching the Night Agent on um Netflix. Heard very good things. Yeah, we really liked it. We were so Kathy and I were just riveted on that, just absolutely riveted. Great story, great characters, um, just you know, just enough action to be to be fun. Um, twists and turns, and and some you know very interesting stuff going on. She was away for the last couple of days, so we haven't had a chance to finish it. We have one episode to go before we finish the series. Uh, very very excited about that. Um, we 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 got into Night Agent because we didn't really want to get back into Shadow and Bone because it's kind of I don't know kind of dragging a little bit. 
Um, so we're going to finish up Night Agent, go back to Shadow and Bone. And then while she was away, I actually watched the first two episodes of The Recruit on Netflix. And I, I really didn't think I would like it. It's about a it's about a uh, an attorney in the CIA. His job is to make sure that the, whatever the group is he's working with, whatever the whatever things going on is you know is done in a way that it doesn't come back negatively on the CIA, et cetera. Completely different way to look at how things work within that organization. No idea if anybody is, is even close to reality. But I, I after the second episode, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of, I kind of dig it, kind of dig it. So I would suggest checking it out if you're, if you're really bored. Um, I, w- I wouldn't say go out of your way. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So a lot of stuff going on. Nice. What about you guys? Well, other than WrestleMania, I just watched The Mandalorian. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um. I can bring something up. So, like, I went through a phase back in the day where I just wanted to buy every movie in sight. So, I have, like, over 2,000 DVDs, I guess I would say. And before my basement flooded, I had, like, a whole, like, rack of them all hung up on the wall. Nothing got damaged. It's just, like, the rack got damaged in the flood. But I have all my movies in, like, cases. So, um, Emily wanted to watch a movie this past week. I'm like, just go sit through the box and find one. So, um, Oh, Jack! Wait! What? Tell me, what? tell me, are you gonna build um a video video store, rental store in your basement? That'd be pretty cool. Why not? Maybe. I don't know. Why? You should check out the YouTube videos. People actually do that. Mm-hmm. No, they do. They are pretty sharp. That's like I've seen the blockbusters where you have the candy and all that stuff. And it's, it's pretty the cool. Easiest way to get strangers into your basement. Yeah. Like I'll come home from work, Kev's in my basement just eating like um with snowballs and be like hey what's up man no um, i i won't be watching movies in the back room no i know you won't um so no but um the movie that she picked out was actually one of my favorite movies growing up have you guys ever seen the movie regarding henry with harrison ford mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's a classic um so it was written by a young jeffrey abrams jj abrams which is really cool um long story short it's about um Harrison Ford's character, he was a powerful attorney, kind of like a dick. Nobody liked he was just an asshole. And then he gets shot, which I didn't know about this till recently. It was I'm probably butchering his name, but John Likrizama. Oh, John Likrizamo. Yeah. And he plays the but then he uh wakes up from his um when he's in like a coma and then he's like realizing I don't want to be this person who I am, which is kind of cool. And the symbolism is really cool in this movie. When the movie starts, he's in like blacks and grays. And as the movie is progressing, he's in like blues, greens. He's starting to realize he wants to be a different person. And he knows, I think there's a saying, he knows when to say when. And he's like, I don't like who I am. And it's it's kind of really cool. It's like the music is by Hans Zimmer. It's like one of the best film scores I've ever heard. It's really neat. And I don't know, it was just really cool how it was really, I liked how his physical therapist was working with him. He's not talking in the movie at first, but. Um, his physical therapist is saying to him, he's like, we got to get you talking. We got to get you doing this. And he looks at all the women that he's working with in the rehab facility to Harrison Ford, the physical therapist. He's like, hey, I got to get me some of that. And Harrison Ford's like, what the fuck, bro? But like, it's really neat, though, like how the movie interacts though with his wife, his daughter. And it's just a solid, really good movie. And J.J. Abrams actually plays the delivery boy in the movie. He actually has a cameo, which is really neat. So... That was a movie that I liked when I was a kid, and I was like, and she really liked it too. She's like, "Oh wow, I did not see that coming." Because there's like a couple little twists though, and it's a just a solid, pretty good movie, feel good, and really good movie to watch. I don't know. It sounds like a my abuser will change fantasy, but hey, <laughs> I don't know. And like what Kev said though, with Bad Batch, it left with a cliffhanger, and I'm very excited to see what they do for season three as well. Um, People are going to celebration this week. There's a Bad Batch panel that I really want to see how they're going to handle it. Um, but and I'll watch Mandalorian tomorrow, and I'll report back to you guys. So I'm hearing good things. A lot of people are talking about it. Like people are tweeting, and, and it looks really good. But like what everybody else watched WrestleMania as well. But I'll turn that back over to you, Paul. All right. I mean, that's all I got. The only thing I watched was Mandalorian and WrestleMania. Yes. Um, 
So that's, uh, yeah. What do you have to add to the Mandalorian? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you? There's not much else I can add without ruining it for people. No, I know. But like, what do you, what do you, it's Jack. What do you think about the whole story though? What do you think about where it could go or what they could do with it or, or what might spin off from this or, I mean, more than, more than just what this last episode was. Um, I, I think it's phenomenal, and I think the star the story is far from over. Um, I, I see online people are saying that they've made missteps and blah 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 blah, and I I don't think they have. I think people just aren't being patient with the story, and I think we're getting the last couple episodes we're getting big payoffs, and I mean, all the fan service is phenomenal, but it yeah. doesn't feel like it's shoehorned in. No, I I don't I don't feel that way. So. I'm. I'm such a fucking fanboy though that I just I'm like just give me more. I'm not I'm not like these I, I don't know where these people come from that are so down on these stories. It's like who are you and like what what who touched you in a bad way? Just say thank you. <laughs> <right>. Whatever. <laughs> what was it? Corbs usually says it. Do you, should we all say his saying though right now? You're gonna harmonize. <laughs> Drop, you drop your, your nuggets. nuggets. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank my legs for supporting me, my arms for always being by my side, my fingers. I can always count on them. Good night, everybody, and mega bite me, bitches. This has been a Geek Pod Network production. <laughs>